Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness and today I'm going to show you how to make the Suffolk coin purse. This is a really quick project that comes together with a metal clasp at the top and a little bit of glue. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Okay, before we begin, you'll need to print out the PDF pattern file, and you always want to open the file using Adobe Reader. It's a free program that you can download to your computer or device if you don't already have it. So you want to open the file in Adobe Reader, and you always want to print using actual size. So not scaling or fit to page, it needs to be actual size. And the very last page of the PDF, the PDF file is the pattern piece, and you'll want to measure either the one inch square or the four centimeter square to make sure that either of those squares measures exactly. So I'm going to take my quilting ruler just to verify. And the square should be exact, so it shouldn't be slightly smaller or slightly larger. It needs to be exactly either one inch or four centimeters. So after verifying, you'll cut out your pattern piece to the outside of the thick black line. And after you finish doing so, this is what your pattern piece should look like. So You'll use this pattern piece to cut out all of your pieces from fabric and interfacing. So let me show you how to attach the fabric to the interfacing. So we'll start off with one of the lining pieces and the Pellon Shape Flex interfacing. So one side of the Shape Flex interfacing feels bumpy to your fingertips and that's the side with the adhesive that will go against the wrong side of your fabric. So I'm going to flip my fabric so that it's face down, lay the Shape Flex directly on top, again the bumpy side against the wrong side of the fabric. And I have my iron set at the cotton setting, and I'm just going to glide the iron over all areas of the fabric for a few seconds. You want to keep the iron going. You don't want to just plonk it down for 10 seconds and then move it for another 10 seconds because that will create iron-shaped imprints on your fabric. You can use some steam if you'd like, and I always recommend using a pressing cloth. For my videos, I don't use a pressing cloth just so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so when you've ironed that in place, you just want to take your fingernail and try to peel back a corner of the fabric from the interfacing. So if you can easily peel away your fabric from the interfacing, that just means that you, means that you need to iron it a little bit longer. If it's properly adhered, then you're good to go and you can repeat that with the other lining piece. So for the exterior pieces, if you're using a fusible foam, you'll attach the fabric to the fusible foam in a similar manner to what we just did with the Shape Flex. I like using a sew-in foam. I'm using By Annie Soft and Stable, and so because it's sew-in, we'll need to machine base the fabric to the foam. So I've got my fabric. I'm going to lay it on top of the foam and just give it a quick pass with my iron just to smooth everything out. And then I'm going to take my Wonder Clips and clip all the way around the piece of fabric to hold the layers together. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to four millimeters for like a long basting stitch. And I'm going to sew the entire perimeter of this fabric piece using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now go ahead and pull out your two exterior pieces, and I'm going to flip so that the wrong side of the fabric is face up, and then using the paper pattern piece, I'm going to transfer the marking on the piece to the wrong side of the fabric, so basically on the interfacing side. And you'll do the same thing with both pieces. Okay, so now we're going to place these two pieces right sides together. You can use some Wonder Clips to hold the layers in place. And we're only going to be sewing the side and the bottom edges, so not this little cutout over here in the corner. We're going to be sewing from the marking down and then along the bottom edge. So if you had your stitch length lengthened for the basting stitch, go ahead and turn back to your usual minus two and a half millimeters. 
and this is going to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now go ahead and pull out your two lining pieces and again you should have the markings from the pattern piece on the wrong side of the fabric. We're going to place these two pieces right sides together and it's very similar to what we did with the exterior. We're going to be sewing from the marking down on both sides and then we're going to start sewing from this corner except we need to leave an opening centered along the bottom edge of this lining piece so I'm just going to be sewing maybe about an inch and a quarter in from each side and again make sure you backstitch but we need to leave that opening here so if you find it helpful you can take your fabric marker and draw two lines where you'll have the opening just as a reminder so that you don't sew across the entire bottom edge and again this will be a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we're going to be pinching these corners that we left unsewn in the previous step. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and stick my finger through the opening. Make sure you smooth out the fabric with your finger so that we, you won't be sewing over a bunch of bunched up fabric. And you're going to align the seam that's on the side with the seam that's on the bottom. And I'm just using my fingers to push that seam open. So this is what it should look like. It should form a straight line. I'm going to place a wonder clip on that edge and you may find it helpful also to put wonder clips on this smoothed out area over here just to make sure that the fabric doesn't get bunched up before it comes under your needle and the same thing for the other side again I'm going to push my finger in the opening to smooth everything out and then make sure that the seams are aligned and seams pressed open. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew this straight edge over here using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so you'll repeat that same process of pinching and sewing the corners of your lining fabric. And then go ahead and turn your exterior right side facing out and be sure to push out those corners. Okay, so now we're going to place the exterior inside the lining. Make sure that you align the stitching line basically where you started sewing the side and then we're going to pin the whole top edge. We're going to be sewing this top edge both sides so the front of the pouch and then the back of the pouch. It's going to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance and basically we're starting that stitching line from where you sewed the side so basically connecting it and then you'll be stopping the stitching when you reach the stitching line on the other side. You may find it helpful to sew half at a time. So for instance, half of the pouch, I'm going to start sewing in the middle, sewing from the center to the stitching line and then flipping it over so the exterior is facing up then and then finishing up again starting at the center and meeting the stitching line. This just helps because it's a smaller project. It helps get the project on your sewing machine a little bit more easier.
Okay, and again, you're gonna stop sewing when you're reaching that stitching line. Make sure you don't sew past it, otherwise you'll have your fabric bunched up. So I sewed the first half. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over so the wrong side of the exterior is facing up. And I'm going to sew the, the second half. Okay, so now I'm going to make little clips within the seam allowance, about an eighth of an inch high, so just really tiny clips. This just helps the fabric spread through the curve. And you'll do the same thing for the other half, so basically the, the back of the pouch. Okay, so now we're going to turn the fabrics right side out through the opening in the lining. Okay, use your fingers to kind of push that top seam out and then we're going to give it a good press. You can close that opening in the lining using whichever method you prefer. If you prefer to do it by hand using a slip stitch, I actually have a free video on my YouTube channel on how to navigate through a slip stitch, or you can sew the opening closed by machine. So if you'll be doing that, you'll just be pushing the fabrics toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch and then top stitching using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So if you do the top stitching, those stitches will be visible. If you prefer not to have the visible stitches, then you'll want to do the slip stitch. Either, either method's fine. I'm going to do a slip stitch, um, sorry, a machine stitch here. And then also you'll want to top stitch. As far as you can get, you certainly don't need to get all the way into the corner, but an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric on the front and back of the pouch. And that'll just hold the layers together in preparation for inserting into the metal purse frame. Okay, so now we're going to test out the purse frame on the fabric just so we have an idea of how it will be fitting before we glue it in place. So I went ahead and on the front of the pouch placed the purse frame already. So I'm going to do the same thing on the back. So this hinge over here will rest at the corner where the um, fabrics meet. And then you, you just want to push the rest of the fabric into the channel and it'll be a snug fit. Okay, so once you're happy with the positioning and how it fits inside, we're going to go ahead and glue the frame in place and we're gonna glue one portion at a time. So we'll glue the front of the pouch first, let it dry completely, and then we'll glue the back in place. And I like using Beacon 3-in-1 fabric glue. You can use other glues, Beacon also makes fabric tack, 
but you want to choose a glue that's not super runny because while you're waiting for the glue to dry you don't want um, a runnier glue dripping down on your fabric or getting on your metal frame so that's why I like this particular glue okay so I'm pulling the frame off I've got a couple threads that I want to snip first and then I'm just going to place the glue in the channel and you want to be frugal you don't want to load it up with glue because then when you add it on top of the fabric it'll kind of squish the excess glue out and again we're just doing um, one portion at a time so just the front of the pouch first And if you have a chopstick or some other blunt item that you'd like to use to push the fabric into the frame, you can do so. I'm just going to go ahead and use my fingers. And you just want to make sure it's the fabric is pushed all the way up into the frame. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let this dry for a little while, and then we'll come back and glue the, the back of the pouch. Okay, now we're going to glue the second half of the frame in place. And this one's not as easy as the first, obviously, because your first half of the frame is attached. But I'm just going to go ahead and start putting glue in the channel. And I'm just trying to gently push that fabric out of the way. Okay, so make sure that the fabric is pushed all the way up into the frame and then let that second side dry and then you're all finished. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I can't wait to see your finished coin purse. Be sure to post a photo of your project in my Facebook group. And remember, if I can do it, so can you.